Oldu sokak zordum. What did he say? He was talking a lot during the press conference. I just told to myself, I'm gonna get him, gonna bring him a little pain. I'm sorry. Well, we've heard the timekeeper ring a bell, but... As you can see, you know, he took a lot of punishment for what he did. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. If I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGAG, and praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out, man. I'm sure that you probably know already, but Jenna Beck and Michaela Vich fought, and yes, they fought in Australia, down under. Shout out to my Aussie brethren and sister. And yes, we live streamed it. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to those that can't be kicked it with us. And we provide our commentary. You know what I'm saying? We do it from a genuine perspective and an honest perspective. You know, no manipulation or affiliations with certain parties or platforms or fighters. We just call it straight down the middle, baby. And speaking of straight down the middle, man, I'm sure you already know right by now, Jenna Beck knocked Mikhailovich straight down the middle by that ninth round. You know, he wouldn't be a ninth round stoppage, you know. But in that second round, that's what I want to talk about. That second around bruh jenna beck <laughs> jenna beck is crazy bruh he is straight evil man i'm talking about he was moving Spit that shit out, man. nasty it was it was straight nasty man i'm talking about all types of malevolent movements yep. nefarious intentions yep. and diabolical activity you know the way that he was playing with his food and mikhailovich just couldn't capitalize he couldn't do anything because you know those well those of you just in case you don't know they had some build up and some bad blood because Mikhailovich uh, uh, versus Janabek should have happened some months back. But Janabek, oh fat ass. <laughs> he couldn't make the weight you know what i'm saying he didn't make the weight and uh he was actually hospitalized hospitalized because of it now i know you're like dang doc you gonna talk about somebody who fainted <laughs> no he fainted because he's struggling to make the weight man just go up move up to 168 man so i wonder why he's you know he seems like he's a little afraid of the guys at 168 you know so definitely jenna beck is big for a 160 pound division uh some will consider him a weight bully he's just using his size to an advantage but it's not outside the scope of boxing so i don't think it's necessarily wrong but he is most definitely a weight bully anytime that you're passing out and being hospitalized trying to make weight to the point where the fight is canceled then you are by definition a weight bully yeah. now, i just don't think having an advantage is necessarily cheating like some people will say it's just hey if you don't want somebody to uh gain weight excessively or rehydrate to a large amount then put a rehydration clause on them and negotiate that if you don't you can't complain about it after the fact you know so uh jenna beck just he, he just demonstrated that he's the best in the 160 pound division the second round he, he he dominated him and and he played with him essentially and you know and uh I, i'm not gonna lie to you man i was like this is crazy bro somebody got to get him back because i ain't gonna lie bro michaela vicious people needed to hop in the ring they should have jumped him or something but in addition to that though him playing with them no did he when he actually dropped Mikhailovich, Mikhailovich took unnecessary punishment and additional punishment because there was a mistake and a mishap with the clock. And when I was watching it, man, I remember when I was live streaming, I was like, I keep a timer for the second round. And I even said this. I was like, man, this second round seems long because my timer ended. I thought maybe I didn't stop the clock in time or something. I, I literally said that. But it, when, it, when I watched it back again, it's not that I didn't stop the clock. It's that the referee didn't hear the ticker and the clock wasn't stopped appropriately. So he had about, I'll say about between 10 and 15 seconds extra time for Mikhailovich to get beat on. So he took additional punishment that was unnecessary. So it didn't bode well for him in, in, the, in the subsequent rounds. However, I don't think he was ever really posing a super threat to Jana Beck, you know. Uh, I could finish him in the second round, but I didn't that because, you know, I need to work a little bit. I felt like, you know, he was getting to him. He started fighting on the inside, and I think that Jana Beck was being impacted by this. But like I said, I really do feel like Jana Beck was allowing Mikhailovich to do that, to just get some rounds in and, and quote-unquote punish the guy for their bad blood and their back and forth and exchanges before the fight so um was Mikhailovich showing some heart of course man he demonstrated a lot of heart he was undefeated you know i think he's 26 years old young bull so he has some things that he could work on and develop and learn from this loss you know because a loss isn't that bad as long as you learn from it and i think he could bounce back better and i do still think he's a threat you know he's a big puncher however i don't think he really had anything for jenna beck and i, I will also say this too it kind of looks bad that jenna beck didn't get him out of there earlier now i know that's a little nitpicky but just thinking about 
who Janabek is. We consider him widely the best person at 160. I know I do. I think that this win, even though he got the stoppage, it could have been more impressive if he would have done it in a more devastating fashion you know like he was looking like he was going to do in the second round but i will also say too i don't want to knock him too much because i do think that he was essentially trying to prove a point and make a statement man because he was playing with him in that second round for sure but yeah man i look forward to jenebeck seeing more of him after the fight uh he called out carlos adamas who's another champion and the other champion in uh erislandi lara which i love that i know a lot of people including myself are interested in him versus hamza shiraz but as you know this fight apparently only the ibf title was available you know what i'm saying and and Janibek may be stripped from the wbo so it's hamza shiraz coincidentally is what the mandatory he's the number one ranked fighter in the wbo so if he gets stripped from from the wbo belt then there's really no <clears throat> Excuse me. There's really no point of fighting Hamza Shiraz because if he wants to unify or become undisputed, then maybe he could come back and fight him after Hamza Shiraz fights the number two fighter in Denzel Bentley and they obtain a belt. But if he doesn't have a belt and your ambitions are to get undisputed, then I could understand him not fighting Hamza Shiraz, even though I love that fight. I think that's a great fight. I, I would t lean towards Jenebek, but Hamza Shiraz, you cannot sleep on the young bull, you know? Um, but yeah, I like. Uh, Jenebek versus Arizlandi Lara next or Carlos Adamas. I would love it. I hope WBO doesn't strip him, but if they do, you know, then it is what it is. And apparently it's because Jenebek has refused to pay some of the sanction of fees. You know they want that. You know they want that. You know, so, um, but I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. Y'all let me know who you want Jenebek to fight next. Do you want to be Adamas? Do you want to be Arizlandi Lara, one of the champions in, a, in an attempt to unify and get another belt or be, and, and eventually get undisputed? Or would you rather him fight uh contender like hamza shiraz i mean, I, I really um like I, said, I don't really have a preference because they're all good fights but if his aim is to get undisputed then i would like him to fight carlos sadamas or arizlani lara and it doesn't matter which of the two for me man y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments remember with god we can do anything and without god we are nothing so y'all be easy take care of yourselves the doctor's out peace from the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.